you start seeing organizations like PayPal, Square, Stripe, um, many other very, very large uh, global payments companies now supporting uh, crypto. And the reason that they are is because those regulations are clear. So I think it's going to push adoption rates significantly. Prior to having regulations, the adoption rates were very, very low. So for example, this last year, we doubled our increase in tra transactions. So last year we did 3 billion, this year we did 7 billion as an example. And the reason I feel that that is, is because of regulations, confidence in the marketplace and adoption. 7 billion, That's billion. Right. Yeah, so let's talk about that, this this dramatic increase in volume. Uh, Jason, What 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 is fueling it? It's really adoption. It's it's comfort, uh, acknowledgement, uh, confidence. There's definitely more people that are using crypto today for payments. Anyways, uh, there's definitely more investment. Um, you know, there is a there is a major shift. Of course, uh, last year we saw about ninety percent of all transactions happened in Bitcoin, and this year fifty two percent is in USDT. So, in a stable coin environment where somebody's making a payment. Um, I believe that stable coins and or potentially even CBDCs will be the future for actual transactions where there's a stable value. Transacting in a product that's volatile is very challenging. I was going to ask you if you see any, you know, I think the last time we spoke, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum were two of the most popular coins used to transact. Yes. So I was going to ask if you see a, a, a divergence in that trend. Yeah, for sure. I don't. I don't think that there is a reduction in the investment standpoint. So for example, our clients who are uh, exchanges or trading platforms, they continually increase in growth with people doing transactions for the uh, opportunity to invest into you into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, however, on a transactional base, uh, an individual making a payment to a, a merchant, we're seeing a huge shift towards stable coins. Interesting. And so, like you said, seven billion uh, in 2021. What is the forecast this year? Uh, this year is 11 at the uh, at the moment in our uh, transactional space. So 11 to 13 is our what we expect this year. From our prior conversation, Latin America was a booming um, uh, jurisdiction uh, for you. Uh, is, is that still the path you're seeing, or other other countries popping up areas? Well, def definitely LATAM is, is a huge growth pattern. Um, the outreach that we've seen, we just uh, did a partnership with a group in Brazil called ShipPay. They have about 300,000 merchants, as an example. They now have ability to accept crypto as a form of payment. So that's a pretty big growth sector. Um, but at the same time, Asia is definitely a growing space. Uh, we're working on a new license in the MENA region with Bahrain and Dubai, and those areas are tremendous growth. I'd love to get your thoughts on countries like El Salvador adopting uh, Bitcoin as their reserve currency. Is this a trend that you think we'll, we'll see? And is it one that you support? I definitely support it. I don't know that you'll see a lot of countries as making Bitcoin as a reserve currency as El, El Salvador has. Um, I do think that them supporting uh, merchants with the ability to accept crypto is definitely great. The more countries that support and and, and allow their merchants to use crypto as that form of payment and as a recognized currency, the more adoption. Of course, the, comf the comfort level is there. Um, one of my partners was just in El Salvador actually, and he was, in was, was interested to see that how it actually works there is you do a payment using crypto and the government is actually supporting the transaction value. So the merchant actually receives a local, their local currency and the government is backing the transaction. So a little bit different than say, a merchant in the US or Canada who's doing a transaction, they receive Bitcoin, they're holding Bitcoin. So it's, it's really quite interesting what they're doing there. I know you are crypto agnostic as the CEO of Coin Payments, but if you could comment on, on, on the volatility or a lot of investors concerns when they see the volatility like we've been seeing seeing in Bitcoin rebounding here as we speak. But, you know, what, what, what would you say to them? You know, how do you handle or stomach the the highs and lows um, that come with crypto territory? Well, first of all, I think uh, if you're an investor, you know, you you invest in you should invest in crypto like you would invest in gold or silver or other other assets. You invest it in and hold it. If you're a day trader and you're just thinking that you're going to make 
three, four, five percent or ten percent, and you're just kind of up and down, you're you're a different kind of trader or investor, right? And if you look at the history of Bitcoin as an example, year over year, each period throughout the year, you have very similar downs and very similar ups, right? And you have to definitely know that if you're investing in an asset, don't invest more than you can lose for sure in any in anything. Uh, and I'm not an investment advisor, but that's my own personal state. And I think that if you're going to invest and hold crypto, invest and hold it and understand that that's a long term play for your opportunity to increase your your net value, your net revenue or your net worth. I suppose. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000 percent in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.